What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. It's that time of year again. We get to sit down with one of our favorite guests that we've had on the show in recent years. And uh, every year he keeps wanting to come back on. We are so incredibly grateful and thankful for that. Mr. Rick West, how you doing today, Rick? Guys, how are you doing, man? It's, it's been a while. It has, man. I mean, uh, I know we would see each other here and there, but yeah, yeah. Man, to sit down and have a conversation, it's always a good time. It's it's been a minute, and uh, boy, we're we're really in the final stretch here. Like we're we're so in that final stretch at this point. I think this is the first time that I've never physically been there with you. Yeah, I mean we we this is the first time we've ever you know. So we've got it kind of backwards because like <laughs> pandemic, we were supposed to be on Zoom, but uh, but no, it's 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 great to be able to carve out some time to hang out with you guys tonight and. Um, you know, this is like one of my last gasps of, of fresh air before I really, you know, put the nose to the grindstone because we're literally two less than two weeks out yeah. at this point. Oh, did I say that out loud? But uh, yeah, it's it's barreling down on top of us like a train, man. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, I, I, I totally I totally agree. Me and Tony were talking about this a little bit earlier, but just given the circumstances, it's the first time we've had to go virtually considering I live out of state. You're busy with life because, like you said, two weeks away. Um, so it's definitely uh, – it's fun to be able to yeah. hang out. But, you know, always preferred to hang out in person. Um, but for those who are tuning in for the first time who don't know, um, we got Rick West here. Um, he's, he's one of the great minds behind Midsummer Scream with over 20 years of experience in the industry. Um, you may have known him from his times on YouTube. Uh, one of the pioneers um, and one of the, one of the great influences behind our channel – um, and so we're always grateful to, to have a chat. So how have you been, Rick? Um, I've been well. I've been well and um, busy. This Midsummer Scream is the biggest that we've ever produced. And, um, man, it's got so many moving parts. It's like a giant, nightmarish Rube Goldberg machine with all sorts of moving whirly gigs. And it's uh, it's going to be mind-blowing. You guys are going to be really, really just stoked when you walk through the doors next week. Oh, Two weeks? Man. No, no next you're right. Week, no, week. next week. That's that's insane Jeez. to think about, man. I keep saying that, and it really freaks me out. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are going to be pretty pretty blown away. We've got programming is always challenging for people. They have to decide what they're going to do. I know, Rick. We this is this, this becomes Dude. impossible. We had to get four camera people this year just so we could cover things. I mean, luckily my yeah. girlfriend is just a, a team player, and and our buddy Rob is a team player. Sammy's even stepping up this year. We're gonna have to split awesome. some of these panels this year. I'm telling you, it's this one is is I mean, we've got two and a half days, we'll say and a half because Friday is six to ten. Yeah. But dude, even Friday night is programming and the Hall of Shadows is open Oof. for the first time. So it's just it's freaking nuts from go all the way yeah. to the end this week, this this time. So a couple of new things I would like to talk to you about before uh, we really jump into the fun and goodness, and, and two things that I really sure. love that you guys, uh, you guys, you, obviously you guys always listen to the fans, and you guys always are trying to make the best experience for the fans. Uh, how, first question is, uh, what was the idea, and 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 how was it like to have the conversation to uh, to get everyone on board to open the Hall of Shadows on Friday? Um, it was it was easy. So so months ago I, I don't really know at what point it would have been probably well it would have either been the the end of last year we we always we always have our dates for the next mix midsummer by the time we're having a midsummer show so right um i i think that david marklin probably had mentioned to me hey you know we're going to be able to install a day early next year oh. do you think and that's how that seed gets planted and i said well You'd think that that would be an easy yes, but on the back end of things, you got to realize that means haunters have to take an extra day off work. They have to rent their trucks for another day. Mm -hmm. The hotel suddenly is another day. So it, it, it suddenly is like complicated rather than just saying, yeah, we get another day of build. It's a lot. Right. And it's a lot to ask of our haunters that we already ask a lot of our haunters. And so I posed the question. The question was, hey, we have an extra day. Do you guys want to go for it? And and after building for two and a half days, you want to open, you know, for four hours on Friday night? And it was unanimous. Yes. I mean, wow. it, 
haunters are just such a, a an amazing breed of creatives where they will literally like kill themselves until the last minute building stuff but then the minute you say so do you want people to come through they're like yes it's like it's like <laughs> having you know a fresh cup of coffee you know they're like yes yeah. uh so it it was pretty easy uh actually and uh it's a big deal it's the first time in our six six shows that we've had the hall of shadows open other than the saturday and sunday yeah i mean we're super stoked for it that literally opened up more room for us to actually get to experience hall of shadows take our time the show floor and everything that friday is what we're going to really sure. take that time to do and and then you know panel it up saturday and sunday man Yep, and boy, you've got your work cut out for you because we've got lots and lots of programming, man. Lots of goodies, lots of goodies. Yeah, so much. I, I, I every year I'm in charge of developing our schedule for the weekend. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, going through, going through the app and finding all right which panels, which panels are which. Um, and you know, every, the first year we went, it was a little difficult. Obviously, you know, like okay, we might have to skip out on a couple. The next year it was like okay, now we have to skip out on more. And this year I'm like, uh, we're can we clone ourselves somehow, some way? Um, yeah. Just because the programming this year is out of this world. I mean, um, you have a scream, um, the screaming room, um, all yeah. of those, the whole of those things going on, basically the entire time the uh, the uh, the events open, and then you have so many great panels. And every year, when I think, man, they can't get any better. This year, we do get better. Um, one of those best improvements I think you all did this year um, was just announced last week. Um, was on advanced ticketing, um, being able to pick up those credentials on Thursday um, to help alleviate with one of the, usually probably one of the larger complaints you receive is those lines. Um, how did that come to fruition? Last year. Um, <laughs> I have a line wrapped around the building. Hello. I mean, so one thing, I mean, if anything, I think the fans know that the producers of Midsummer Scream, that would be myself, David Markland, Claire Dunlap, and Gary Baker, we are very in touch with with the community and we are very in tune with what people are saying. And, you know, we had a hiccup in, in, in getting people in last last year on Saturday and people waited in line a hell of a lot longer than we anticipated having people wait in line. And, you know, we're not used to this. Is, this is really I, I got to be careful how I say this. We're not used to negative feedback. And so suddenly when there was a problem and we were aware both in person and on social media, shit, there's a problem. Right. Um, you know, once midsummer gets rolling and once it's going, it's kind of on its own, right? Well, you can plan and plan and plan for 18 months or whatever, but when the doors open, it's kind of, it's, it's a living, breathing thing. It's out in the world. Right. And there's very little that we can do at that point to, counter correct things that are that aren't going right but we had a year to to plan that and without getting too much into the weeds uh we have if anything overcorrected this year so that that's a non-issue and and so one of the ways that we've overcorrected is uh opening up ticketing for people to come get their credentials and stuff on thursday which will be great. I mean, why not? We're already going to be boots on ground starting Wednesday. So why not have, you know, it, it, people that are in the area that want to come on by, they're more than welcome. And and yeah. we'll have more messaging about that on, on socials and all that. But uh, that was one way to alleviate that. And then the other way is, you know, operationally, we're just, we're throwing a ton of people at the line itself to get people wristbanded and scanned and checked in so that when it's go time, the doors will open. People are going to flow through the security points. And we have really high-tech security, so they literally flow right through the security points. And we're anticipating people coming in a lot faster this year than last year. I'm excited to see it. I mean, I, I think on a personal standpoint, if I may say so myself, um, security always does a great job every single year, making sure everyone gets in safe, uh, everyone is safe. And they do. They go above and beyond every single year, especially to put up with us, the haunt community, who can get really wild and and you know loud and stuff. But we we do respect the rules and whatnot. So a big shout out to to Long Beach Convention Center uh, security team. They do. They go above and beyond, especially with conventions like this. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I think it's a great idea. I'm looking forward to actually going on a Thursday just so I can look at the convention and be like, this is the calm before the storm, man. Here we go. Like just to kind of get that afternoon, that sunset in Long Beach, and kind of enjoy it before. 
it's time it's yeah. go time you know like i'm excited to do that so i yeah. thought it was a really not to you know, not to mention to bring down crowds i mean that was a, a an, when me and sammy saw that we were like wow this is cool like we can go down an, a day early pick up everything and not have to worry about it so yeah we i mean there are a lot of people that are traveling to long beach for this so we figure if people are going to be in the area they're going to be walking distance at the hotels or whatever yeah why not have a, a table set up outside for people to come and you know get their stuff right and so uh, i i think that that's going to go a long way in in alleviating some of some of the uh challenge that we had last year man it's it, i mean it's looking to be a, a stacked year now i know as as a haunt fan seeing all this programming man like it, it must make you guys get it just as excited when you guys are planning it, man. It's like just to think what the fan reaction is. I mean, we got a ton of heavy hitters this year. We got the 50th anniversary of Not Scary Farm. They're going to be presenting at the event. John Murdy always coming with surprises at the event. Who God knows what he's going to bring this year. Um, L.A. Haunted Hayride, 13th Floor Productions, they always come out. They've been giving a lot of free tickets a lot lately, so we'll see if they, they keep up with that tradition or they announce some really cool stuff this year. Regardless, it's looking like to be a big year for uh, 13th Floor. And you got the 30th anniversary of Six Flags. Just to name a few of the heavy hitter uh, panels, like what is it like for yeah. you guys scheduling all this? Because just looking at all the scheduling, I'm just like, like Sammy said, we need to clone ourselves because there's just no way we want to see it all. Yeah, you know, the, the thing that's kind of weird is how, and, and we had nothing to do with it, the planets kind of aligned that there are a lot of big milestone years, you know, being celebrated this year. So you have knots 50, you have fright fest 30, you've got Winchester 100, Yeah, you know? And so that kind of writes itself. It's like, okay, that's the topic. That's the topic next. That's the topic. So that made that aspect of programming pretty easy. Right. Uh, but it's just a matter of, you know, like I said, we spitball these things. I mean, for the past two months, I already have, I, I operate, I'm a very simple creature of habit. I operate off of the to-do list. Right. I think it's like a Microsoft app. It's on my computer. <laughs> it's a to-do list. And I keep, I keep really just like really anal notes about things. That sounds gross, but I, I, I really <laughs> kept, I keep a lot of detailed notes about every subject. So like I can look at my computer every morning and it just go down the list and see where I left off and what needs to be done. And for the past two months, um, I already have a, a midsummer 24, uh, to do list already. So, um, it's just one of those things where a lot of these things aren't just, Hey, let's do this. Let's go get the shiny thing and make it happen within three months. Sometimes that happens. But a lot of these things, like we were talking about having a really heavy Dungeons and Dragons component very seriously um, last year while we were installing in Long Beach. And I was having a, a, a talk with a group of friends, actually, that I was showing the Hall of Shadows under construction. And they were all game. they're all gamers. And they were kind of like, yeah, man, you should... Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons would be a really great, and this is something that David Markland had brought up before the pandemic, even. And so these things kind of percolate for a while, you know. Um, like David and I are already kicking around like the underlying theme for next year's show because, like, I'm at the point that's really scary. I'm we're at the well. I can't speak for David because he's got a lot more on his plate uh, from an operational point of view than I do right. at this point. So. Um, I'm at the scary part where I call this like, this is almost, I mean, it re really start like on this coming Monday, but I'm at the point where I call this the dark side of the moon, where suddenly there's not a whole lot of activity left in my inbox. Uh, my to-do list is much shorter than it was two weeks ago. And it's, that means that it's like go time, right? It means like, okay, this, this ship is getting ready to sail. Um, so, that's cool. It's also unnerving as hell. Right. Um, but we, I mean, by the time that midsummer comes around, and I'm sure I've said this with you guys before, we're just like excited, but also it's like, oh my God, let's just have this baby already, <laughs> you know, type of thing. Yep. Um, Cause it's, you know, people that are coming to midsummer may have realized a week earlier, oh, cool. They're going to have a Ron Chaney panel, you know, whatever. This is something that I've been living almost every day for the past, you know, eight months, nine months or whatever. Right. Um, so by the time that midsummer rolls around, we're just, we're so ready to do it and to, to get on 
with other things. Um, and so there's already heavy discussion about next year items already, you know, and and so that's just kind of the way that it goes. I don't even remember your question, but there we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I think you pretty much summed it up about coming up with all these 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 ideas for the panels. You really summed it up with everything aligning and that's kind of makes it an easier option for you. It's like, yeah, let's celebrate that. Boom. Let's celebrate that. Anniversaries are super easy. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, Winchester's 100. They'll have a few things to talk about. Yeah. So that that makes that kind of thing makes it easy. It's when you have something like, oh well, what about Spooky Joe's Podunk Scary Carnival? What are they doing this year? And it's like, okay, then we got to dig a little bit. You know, what's the uh, angle of that? Could, uh-huh. Right. But really, I think like, most of these panels and presentations kind of they kind of write themselves. Like I, you know, one of the one of the gifts that keeps on giving is that. Um, because of last year and the work that I did on the monster kids panel. Um, I, you know, my girlfriend and I, we became good friends with these, these monster families. Right. And so the friendship lasts beyond, you know, saying goodbye to them in the green room after the panel. And, um, you know, I've gotten to know Ron Chaney really well. And, and he's a busy, busy guy and he's doing a lot of really cool things. And I said to him, I said, you know, we really should have like a continued conversation that's kind of like a, a monster kids part two where you talk about the challenges of carrying on the legacy of two of your grandparents, you know, um, yeah. that gets hard, you know, like I'm sure that probably more fans coming to midsummer scream probably haven't seen the Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney Sr. Yep. than have. And so the question that I've I've had casually, if you have this kind of discussion casually, just with him and with Sarah Karloff over over dinner and stuff, I just like how how do you perpetuate that? How do you keep younger generations keyed in and and tuned in and turned on to uh to your family's legacy? It's that's like a 24 seven job, you yeah. know, and Ron and uh, Ron is really making a go of it. I mean, they all do the little, little ghosties, um, but, but Ron, he's like, he's making short films. He's like producing metal songs. Nice. Now Just, he's doing all this crazy stuff. And I said, well, we should have like more of a spotlight, you know, on you. And, and so we started fleshing out, well, yeah, you know, you could, you could show this or you could, you know, talk about this and definitely show pictures of this. And, and suddenly it was like, okay, this is great. And I blew this by David Markland. He said, yeah, that sounds cool. Great. And then the question was like, well, who's going to moderate that? Who's going to lead that? And Ron's like, well, I, I would assume you. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Cause we have this kind of almost unwritten rule that as producers of midsummer, we don't do more than like one presentation. Right. And like, I don't think David's, I don't know that David's ever like intentionally done a presentation. (laughs) And, 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 and so I'm usually the one that's up there like doing this or that talking to haunters or whatever, but we like to obviously spread that spotlight around to other people. And, but it just kind of made sense. Right. It kind of like, well, I'm the one who's like really understanding what Ron's doing these days. And so okay, I'll do it. So I, I kind of, I, you know, said to David, I said, Hey, look, I know I'm already doing this haunters, you know, panel or whatever. He's like, no, that's cool. Just go ahead and do it. You know? So, um, there's always a lot of like checking in with each other just to make sure that you're not stepping on toes and, and not being a spotlight hog or, or anything like that. And so that's just so much goes into the programming. Like I said, some of it falls into our laps. Some of it, we kind of are continued thoughts from the, the previous year. And some just are things that we've been kind of refining for years. And 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 for better or worse, it's it's time to give birth to those ideas. Time to give the birth. Let it release into yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned uh, – we're actually leading right into my next question. Uh, you yeah. deeply t- touched on it uh, briefly there. Um, was a hot haunts of 2023. I know this is a panel that you've done uh, at, at previous midsummers where you yeah. really highlight some of these local haunters. Um, and, and, you know, really put a, a nice spotlight on them and give them the love they rightfully deserve. Uh, what can someone that may have never attended that panel expect of uh, going to that panel? 
You know, I think that people that aren't necessarily tuned in uh, will be surprised uh, by the dedication and the passion that these people have for what they do. Uh, you you will never meet a home haunter that says that they get rich off of being a home haunter. Uh, most of them are in debt and don't know how the hell they're going to pay for Halloween. Uh, they do it because of passion, and I think that people will learn that as they're as they're hearing about these things. They'll probably learn about a couple haunts they've never heard about. Um, and I think that it just kind of sets that spark off where they're like, hey, okay, we're starting to plan our Halloween outings. Let's go ahead and put, you know, let's take a trip up to the high desert and go visit All Saints Lunatic Asylum, you know? And so I, I that's the purpose of, of that. I mean, God knows I could have an ongoing hot haunt you know, or hot haunters or whatever panel for the entire weekend and just like have a revolving door talking to people. So it's very hard when you have to select like, you know, three or four people to talk to yeah. up on the stage because they're just a small, small sampling of everything that, that SoCal has to offer and beyond. Like we can talk about this more when we talk about Hall of Shadows, but for the very first time this year, we have a haunt that is coming from out of California to be part of Midsummer Scream, which is really exciting. And so that's going to be Sean Herman from Wicker Manor in Denver, Colorado. Wow. And so he's going to be on stage. And fans that are coming to the panel will get to see pictures of his journey from Cal from Colorado to California. And uh, so it is an ongoing presentation that I do every year uh, with different haunters. But I think that it's new and exciting every time. But the one common thread that doesn't change is the passion. And I know that people afterwards will say to me, God, I just, I, I, I'm so enthralled by the dedication that, you know, Joe Blow, you know, had on stage for, for what, what he does. And that's just, that's just amazing to me. That's so inspirational for me. 100%. So I think that that's, I think for the people that aren't really tuned in, that's the takeaway. They're going to come out going, wow, these people are just so driven. It's ridiculous. No, it really is. We were introduced to the home haunt scene in 2019. Um, we got invited out to Pirate's Cave to check it out. That was the first time we ever experienced the home yeah. haunt. And, uh, yeah, that's a great one. That was that was definitely a great one. And then year after year, I just remember it getting better and better. It, it just I just could not believe that this was still a home haunt. You know, like these people go above and beyond and and they make some of the things that belong in theme parks honestly and they and they're yeah they're they're finding a lot of this stuff in like thrift shops and, and and any bargain stores they can and they're making the most out of it and they are doing things that are is is literally changing and revolutionizing the haunt game as we speak yeah you know and and yeah and, it's un it's unbelievable and it, it gets more interesting every year because literally the haunters become not just young, younger every year they become so polished, you know, in their craft so early on. And I would say that that's a lot having to do with like YouTube and social media. It's like one of the only good things to come from social media is, is just this readiness and availability at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Say, I want to learn how to make a rocking chair rock. Like there's a ghost in it. There's probably 20 videos right now that you can look at on YouTube that yep. show how to do that. Right. So not only are the haunters younger these days, they're more savvy, right? They're, they're more savvy going into these things. And um, the one thing that doesn't change over time, you hit it on the head, was they're very thrifty with, with the way that they put their haunts together. And it's funny because a lot of them are literally dumpster diving, looking for props and things like that. But when the lights go out and the black lights come on and the fog flows, it looks like theme park quality, right? You couldn't right? even tell. You couldn't even Yeah, tell. so I got one of my good one examples, of my one man. of my favorite one, one of my favorite stories and and I I'm sure people have heard me talk about this before. Um kind of the granddaddy of all home haunts was the Hallowed Haunting Grounds here in Los Angeles. And it started in the 70s and lasted 34 years, 33 34 years and uh it was amazing because it was such an out of control yard display. It was more than a yard display. I mean, it was a massive yard display, but then you could see scenes in the different in the windows of the house and everything. But it wasn't an over the top like scare everybody type thing. It was a very quiet, very somber. It very similar to something like the haunt with no name yet. 
gotcha. which we have in Palm Jobs, right? Very somber. Just like you got to stand there for 15 minutes and you'll see different little things happening, right? Shadows creeping slowly across the, you know, very subtle special effects. And it was really creepy because Gary had a bunch of these, they were called shrouds. They're just like these ghostly shrouded figures, but you could hear them whispering and chanting in like, in like Latin. Ooh. And it was just very, very creepy. And I remember one year I said to Gary, I said, that is so just creepy and perfect sounding. Like, what are they saying? Like, what, what is the script? What are they saying? And he started laughing. And basically, one of the main chants was, all of our stuff is made of shit. <laughs> so, like, it was like this, it was this inside joke that was just, to me, it was so phenomenal. Because not only is it funny, but it's, like, so true. Right. Like, there's every home haunter you talk to, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I was driving down the street, and I saw the perfect thing. And I had to stop my car and back up and get it. So, yeah, just piggybacking off of what you brought up about, you know, getting things at thrift stores or whatever. 100%. And they make it look bitchin'. They do. They really do. Every yeah. single year. I mean, I've been through a lot of home haunts now, and that's usually the, the kind of middle to end of October right there is just hitting those home haunts. I mean, I, I run into you a lot, so you know how it is. Just just planning your weekends. All right, we're going to hit this, this, and this tonight, and this, this, and this tomorrow. That, oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun, man. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, they, these guys go above. And this is why I, I absolutely love what you guys do with Midsummer Stream overall. You guys make a program that is for all ages literally if you love the yeah. the in your face horror going to haunt stuff there's a place for you here if you love like the old time old school halloween feel there's a place for you here if you just love the spooky vibe in general there's a place for there's a place for everyone here and i love that you guys do that you guys execute that so well well we do it on purpose right we, yeah. we want everybody to be included and um that goes for Guests that are five all the way up to guests that are 95, right? We yeah. want something for everyone at Midsummer. Yeah, no, there's, there's a lot of good stuff, and, and I, I can't wait. We're going to actually explore a lot more of, of everything to do with, with everyone. Like, we're going to go into We can't wait to go pet some kitties. We're excited for that one. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Black Cat Lounge, man. That, that's like lounge. the that's the constant. The Black Cat Lounge is one of the biggest attractions at Midsummer Scream. And uh, L.A. Kitten Rescue is coming back. And, uh, you know, last year, last year, uh, my girlfriend and I, we were watching, you know, we were big animal fans and, and, yeah. and definitely fans were cat people. And, um, you know, we stumbled across this guy. It's Nathan the Cat Lady. And that's one of our favorite, you know, uh, online personalities and Instagrammer. And... Uh, my girlfriend, Elianova, she said, you should reach out to him and see if he wants to come be part of the Black Cat Lounge. <laughs> and so we did. And he's a big Halloween fan. Nice. And so we invited we, we invited him to come see Season of Screamings in Pasadena last December. And he did. And he loved it. He had a great time checking everything out. And I said, OK, now imagine this, but like times five. Yeah. And that's what, you know, Midsummer is. And we want you to be like the ambassador for the, the, the kitten lounge, you know, the black cat lounge. And he was all in. He's the nicest guy. So he's going to be Saturday and Sunday there at the at the black cat lounge saying hi to fans and going in and seeing kitties and helping us get them all uh, forever homes. That's awesome. I mean, I, I think yeah. that's, that's amazing that you guys partner with these people every year to to bring this uh, amazing organization over here to uh, get these cats some homes. If you guys are out yeah. there looking for some cats. And you're going to Midsummer Scream, check out the Black Cat Lounge. You might get lucky and walk away with a, a little friend forever uh, and take yeah, home with you. Yeah, you that's, that's the name of the game, man. Um, screaming Room, Horror Buzz. Yeah. Uh, yep. You guys chose a movie that I'm actually part of. Okay. Uh, the Devil's Got My Arms. All right. I'm sorry uh, to hear that, but <laughs> I hope you got him back. But uh, <laughs> that's got to be a bitch when you're going to the bathroom. Oh, that's man. All I'm saying. I mean, listen, uh, it, it's it's not a bitch when you're playing the devil who gets the arm. So, well, then there you go. Yeah, so. there you go. Well, that sounds great. And you yeah. know what? In all seriousness, Norm Gidney and his team at Horror Buzz. Yeah, uh, we love working with them. You know, they curate all that stuff. And uh, that's that's you know, they got to go through so much content. Yeah. Uh, that I do not envy that. I, I, I would not want that job, uh, especially as somebody that has like ADHD. I'd be like, okay, I got to stop every five minutes and do something else. I just can't sit and watch, you know, short movie after short movie. So, um, no, I, I think that, uh, you know, we are blessed 
to have partners in the community like Horror Buzz. And uh, couldn't be happier with Norm as part of the team. Yeah, can't wait. Um, we'll, we'll dive into the Hall of Shadows since you answered. You know, you talked about that briefly just a few moments ago. Sure. So we'll start at the beginning. Obviously, we know that it's going to have a really great display uh, from Tell Haunts yeah. um, with the theme of Dungeons and Demons. Dungeons and Demons. Can you see my shirt? I'm wearing the Cal Haunt shirt. Is yeah. that for this year? Cal with, with the with the dice. Yeah, it's, nice. it's the dice on it. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. That's that's. So Dungeons and Demons is the overall theme of the Hall of Shadows this year. Uh, Cal Haunts is making the entryway, which is going to be, you know, a, a dungeon entry uh, filled with traps and very famous, you know, Dungeons and Dragons monsters, and. Um, you know, I, I, I'm wearing the shirt because I knew that we would talk about Hall of Shadows and Cal Haunts, and I'm going to say it a lot again uh, leading up to the show and during the show. Um, we have been more than blessed for the past five years to have Cal Haunts do the entryway experience uh, into the Hall of Shadows, and uh, this is going to be their last year doing the entryway. Wow. For us. And, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, they're they're still going to be part of Hollow Shadows, right? But it's it's time to kind of pass that torch on to to another another company to do, and um, you know, the gratitude that I have for the folks at Cal Haunts that work tirelessly, you really like tirelessly in in a hundred plus degree temperature every weekend to make the Hollow Shadows look good, right? Um, like people don't realize on the back end, like how much blood, sweat, and tears goes into what you see as you walk into the Hall of Shadows every year. And Cal Haunts, you know, they have taken the Hall of Shadows and Midsummer Scream to the next level because of their artistry and their their command of their craft. And so if you are around the entrance to the Hall of Shadows this year and there are people we wearing their Hall of Shadow, uh, their, their Cal Haunts shirts, take a minute and just thank them. Thank them like you hopefully can thank all the haunters that you see in the Hall of Shadows. But thank Cal Haunts for doing such an amazing job the past five years at, at Midsummer. And, uh, you know, it's just... Everything is a season, right? And so that season is coming to an end. We're excited about what's to come next year. No, I'm not going to tell you who's doing it. Um, but it's that uh, would get that one out of know. They already know. We already know what it's going to be, actually. <laughs> but uh, but that's another story for another time, gentlemen. Time. But uh, but yeah. So Cal Haunts will will welcome people once again into the Hall of Shadows. We have a lot of really cool displays and a lot of really big, really, really complicated and cool walkthroughs uh, that you guys are going to get to experience this year. Um, we have some firsts. We have we have um, the first officially, like, sponsored by a major attraction, Home Haunt, which is, you know, uh, straight to hail. They do their amazing Home Haunt in Rancho Cucamonga. Well, for the past couple of years now, they've been working with the Winchester Mystery House on their Halloween event up wow. north. And so this year, they're bringing a small version of the Winchester Mystery House to the Hall of Shadows, wow. and their attraction in the Hall of Shadows is officially sponsored by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose. We made it. Did you follow along? There's going to be a we test on it. that. So, yeah. Um, so that's crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, we have... We have um, we have a lot of like like photo booth stuff. We have Raul the Dead, who is very popular with cosplayers and models. Yeah, and good friend of mine. A lot of amazing pictures, right, oh, yeah. in the horror community. And uh, you know, he's a really nice guy, and he's going to have a zombie apocalypse uh, photo location in the Hall of Shadows, and he's going to be taking complimentary pictures of guests and cosplayers all weekend long. That's awesome. Which is what a what a fantastic opportunity for somebody that's dressed up to get their photo taken by a really respected and, and really badass photographer. Right. Um, so that's coming to the hall. We have, like I said, we have our first out of state haunt coming, and it's not a little ten by ten display. It's a full on walkthrough haunted wow. attraction, and that's Wicker Manor. 
and they're they're coming with a big you know scary mine and you're gonna go through the mine shafts and 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 all sorts of things and they're coming from colorado man that's like that's crazy that someone's gonna pack up all their stuff rather than start putting stuff out for halloween and getting it ready they're packing it all into a giant truck and they're driving a thousand miles from denver to long beach to set up in two and a half days, what normally takes them like three months to set up at home. I mean, it's just unbelievable, it, right? That's, me, it's, that's already, nuts. it's already sounding like a record breaking year for Midsummer Screen Dude, as it is. Let me tell you what, if you want to look at record breaking, the height of the facades this year, there are mm-hmm. some that are going to be the tallest things that we have ever had. Like last year, it was Fear Farm. Last year, Fear Farm yeah. had the huge, huge huge facade it was like 21 point something feet or whatever it was well theirs is bigger this year they have a medieval castle theme this year brand new it's going to be taller than that wow um i know that the winchester mystery house one the straight to hail that's going to be right up there too i mean the facades are ridiculous this year on that um one thing that's also going to be really cool, I'm, I'm follow the bouncing ball. Um, <laughs> back with Fear Farm, they have the, this castle theme, and we talked about having a themed bar somewhere. Oh, and so we were just kind of spitballing ideas, and I said, Well, you know, we, we knew that we wanted to attach it to one of the haunts, and I said, Okay, well, the team that's like literally crazy enough to do that would be Fear Farm because they're nuts and we love them and they just have like boundless energy apparently. And so um, I said to Rick Boker, who is, he owns, you know, the fear farm. He's one of the crew there. Uh, I said, so what if we had one of your castle ramparts go off, but it has been battle damaged and there's a big hole blown in, in, in the, in the stone wall and inside a tavern has been set up and we call that the hole in the wall tavern. Nice. And he like loved that. And so that's coming to fruition. So we're actually going to have a bar within the footprint of a haunt while people are in the haunt around you. So that's pretty rad. That's uh, cool. That'll be a first. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff that's just really, really great for the Hall of Shadows. We got people coming back that we love. The Haunt with No Name is, is coming back. Um, of course, uh, the Drex Society, they're coming back. They're going to do Twilight Zone. Zone that's, I'm so experience. hyped for that. Yeah, dude. So, like, that's all coming out. Of course, we would be remiss not to talk about the Decayed Brigade. Yep. They're coming back to tear it up on Saturday and Sunday with three shows each day. Um, so, all your favorites are coming back, plus new ones. And, you know, I, I sound like a broken record. I say it every year that it's like a bigger and better Hall of Shadows, but literally... It's a bigger and better Hall of Shadows this year. Literally bigger and, and high. Th- and dude, <laughs> yes. Everything. And it's a good thing that we have three days for people to experience yes. it because there's going to be so much that I think even more people are going to go to the Hall of Shadows to see what's going on. So exactly. that extra four hours on Friday, that'll help. Oh, 100%. Yeah, definitely. We're excited. Definitely yeah. going to help. I, and I have it here in my notes because I, I made a video on this a few months back. It's 24 and a half feet. Was their previous record? So that's pretty gnarly, yeah, that's huge. We have to figure out with these with these facades that are so big. We have to we have to shift their footprint so that the tops don't hit the catwalks. Right up 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 top. We have to shift them on site sometimes to make sure that they are between the catwalks so they get that extra ten feet, you know, space or or whatever it is. And that is going to be the case, I'm sure, at least with two of the facades this year. So if you can, I know crazy. you're extremely busy, but if you can, you got to get a time lapse of the of the build of of midsummer. Of yeah, that if you can, I know you're going to be extremely busy, but if there's time, it sounds like that would be something that like one of the haunters would do, right? Yeah. Like I, you know, and uh, I'll certainly bring it up to them. I, I know that um, I know that Josh Quillen is going to be around. He's 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 going to be filming bits for Epic home haunts part two. Nice. Uh, and so I'm sure that he's got some tricks up his sleeve. I'll mention that and yeah. see if he's got a, an extra, you know, uh GoPro or whatever to leave in the hall. I mean, yeah. who knows, but it's, it's pretty gnarly. I mean, Obviously. from, 
from from five or six a.m. on Wednesday when the first trucks roll in to you know lights out and then the first guests come in and then the just thousands of people that are there for the weekend and then literally everything going back to normal like nothing had happened in the matter of hours Sunday after we close is just like it's freaking crazy and there's a point like at 10 p.m. on Sunday night when it's mostly quiet and most everything is gone and it's very dreamlike it's like wow that's amazing like this 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 incredible thing happened and it was just a a shooting star just a shooting star moment in history and then it's gone it's gone forever and it's just this big empty hall again and it's just to me that's just like so crazy you know you, that's a very real moment every year you bring that up because we here at the nights of horror have a cycle of emotions we go through leading up to this yeah. weekend after this weekend it goes to like yeah. hella pumped super excited super stoked you know friday gets here we check into the hotel it's like okay it's getting close so we're stoked get to the event friday man we're in like this is it whole weekend goes we are just in a mix of emotions we are overwhelmed we're excited we're happy you know we're, we're seeing people we haven't seen in, in months and stuff and yep. then sunday comes and then that just that sense of depression starts hitting because it's just like this is that was it this is it's over but then yeah. it kind of excites us again because we know that this was like and we say it every year we're going to continue to say it. you guys are the comic-con of the horror and Halloween community. You guys are bringing the biggest and best panels. You guys have your own Hall H. You guys have your own, you know, you have your fans. You have your community. You know, you guys yeah. are bringing these big things every single year, and it and it's just so much that gets us so prepared and ready for that, like, next month for, like, the rest of the announcements to come out, and then haunt season starts. Like, you guys are yeah. really what kind of kick off that haunt season and that whole yeah. uh, announcement season as well because you guys are, like, like I said, you guys are like you have your own Hall H there, man. When when John Murdy comes on stage, that ballroom is yeah. filled. Every single seat is yeah. filled, man. So it, it is nuts to see uh, this event go on every year, and I am so th grateful and thankful that uh, we always get to work with you guys every single year on it, and 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 produce some of the best content out there. The, uh, Midsummer Scream is hands down some of our favorite content to shoot every single year. We love covering the event. We love shooting out the updates to the audience to know what, so they're in the know with the event. Uh, we, we just love everything about this event, so we continue to support it as much as we can. Thank you. Well, we appreciate that, and we appreciate everybody that comes out. I mean, we could plan until the cows come home, but unless people come and support it, you don't got a show. So yeah. we are very grateful, and we we never lose track of the fact that it's about the fans. You know, when, when we started, I, I said, and it, it gets quoted a lot. I said that Midsummer Scream is, is the show that this community wants and deserves. And, and, you know, if, 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 if we ever fall short of that, that's going to be a sad day. Uh, but we just, we just do everything in our power to, you know, we continue to build the show that we as fans want to go to. Right. And that has served us for, for the 10 years that we've been doing shows now. Uh, that, has served, that has served us, you know, as a really, really good internal compass. You know, if, if we have a panel idea and, you know, we're excited about it or part of the team is excited about it, we've we've learned to trust our gut and say well then there there'll be a few other people that are going to be excited about that too and that that usually has worked out pretty pretty well for us same thing with hall of shadows like i have to very carefully consider and select like what is right and what isn't right you know and it's the what isn't right that's really hard actually because everybody's very enthusiastic about being part of the hall of shadows um you know you have to step back and just say, okay, well, is this going to excite people when they come in and see it? Is this something that, that I would go to want to, you know, go and take pictures of and, and, and check out if I was coming in as a fan. Right. And so, you know, we, we just got to keep that. We got to keep that in focus. We got to keep the, the fans and the changing trends and, and the needs of the community um, in focus at all time. Um, it's very easy when you're as big as Midsummer is now, and I'm talking about operationally, um, to kind of lose sight of that, you know? 
there there are there are large entertainment companies out there that own theme parks on both coasts who uh sometimes it really seems like they're not in sync with what their fans want at the parks and 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 we'll leave it at that but i mean i, I just it, midsummer we are very committed to not being that guy right we 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 have to have our fingers on the pulse of the community um, otherwise, you just you get off into the weeds, and you just become this corporate entity that just assumes what everybody's going to want to see and do and all that. And that's a really dangerous trail to go down. That's a very slippery slope. Um, so we just, in in all things, we just take that gut check. And and like I said, that is that has served as a really good compass the last ten years for us. And I, I think that we've done that this year as well. So. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I want to. Before I let Sammy talk, I know Sammy is way to talk, but I just want to say, you know, from here at the Knights of Horror, man, I mean, we appreciate everything you guys do uh, all year round to put on uh, the greatest fucking show in the world. As far as you know, it's it's our it's one thing I look forward to every year. Um, <laughs> you know, every year we're trying to get tickets to go to Comic Con, but I'm like, I know if I don't go to Comic Con, I'm going to Midsummer Scream. So regardless, I'm going to have a great fucking time. I don't even care awesome. where I go. I'd rather go to Midsummer Scream because that's this is where my people are. This is like the community that I'm more a part of now more than ever. You know, so it's 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 something that I fit right in. I get to see all my friends, uh, extended family. Um, I get to see, I get to meet new people. Um, and the best part is, uh, running into Rick throughout the entire event. He's running oh. around and he's, he's excited. We're all excited to be there, but, uh, man, I, 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 we, we look at you guys like, I mean, you guys are our heroes over here, man. You guys are putting on these events and, and giving us somewhere to go to something to cover. And we're, we're eternally grateful for that, man. Even when the going got tough during the pandemic, you guys still figured out ways to entertain an audience that couldn't go anywhere. Like you guys figured it yeah. out and I don't, and you guys earned my respect, like, even before that. But after that, I was like, they still figured out how to entertain us while we're locked in our houses and we can't do nothing. And I, I will never, I will never know how to thank you guys for that because you guys, when it was the, the toughest of times, darkest of times, you guys were still bringing joy to people's faces. We appreciate that, and uh, you know, to an extent, you know, we we were experiencing all that as well, right? Like. I, I think it's very <clears> – <throat> let me just take a little side tangent here because you bring up uh, an important thing. Um, it is now at a point where the pandemic is by and large in our rearview mirror. Yeah. But uh, it, it is 100% still very apparent that the ripple effects from COVID uh, continue and there are a lot of people that aren't okay. There are a lot of people that their lives have been changed forever. There are a lot of people who are still out of work. There are people that are homeless because they lost everything with their work and then they couldn't pay rent and they didn't have a landlord that was caring and whatever. So we know that even though we're gathering for the celebration and we're laughing and joking and everything's awesome and things are definitely getting better, this year feels more normal than last year felt. Right. And so that shows us that we're on the right trajectory out of this. Um, but I understand that the ripple effects are still there and the depression is still there and the hurt in the loss is still there. And in some cases will never go away. And so we just want everyone to know that we are aware that we're still not out of the woods. And so it's very special that the community gets to come together in Long Beach and celebrate, you know, the, this, this event with us. And, uh, but that in the quiet times, in, in, in the private moments, we are thinking about everybody and, and we are sending love and prayers and, and positive, uh, positive wishes out to, to people out there. And look, it's, it's okay. And it's, it's normal to be depressed and to feel alone. And, and if anybody's having to watch this or whatever, just know you're not alone. There's a whole community out there of your brothers and sisters that are there for you. And just, just reach out. You all, it's a lot to reach out. I know, but just reach out and, and you will find that that you're you're going to have a lot of support there, and even if that means talking to somebody at midsummer, maybe it's a stranger that you meet, and you have a connection. Maybe it's old friends that you haven't seen in a while, 
you know, it's okay to say, well, I'm not okay, but I'm getting better. Or no, I'm not okay, and this is what's going on. You're not a downer. You're reality. And that's the reality that we're still all in. Outside of Midsummer Weekend, we still all have problems. We still all have financial problems. A lot of the jobs have not come back. My theme park work hasn't come back, really. You know, I work in the themed entertainment industry as a designer, and still worldwide, yeah, there's a there's a pulse now. There's a little pulse, but, boy, the work is not like it was pre-pandemic. So I'm personally still feeling the huge ramifications uh, of COVID. So we're all in this together, and even though we're talking about moving on and moving beyond and rah, 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 look, we get it. I get it. And, and you guys, are, you're not alone. And we're just happy to have everybody with us that can be in Long Beach. 100%. Yeah, speaking of having everyone there, uh, and, and there's a place for everyone within the Haunt community. Um, one thing I, I really wanted to highlight, and I thought this was a great move by Midsummer Scream, was really highlighting some of those underrepresented groups um, with various uh, presentations throughout the weekend. You have accessibility in horror, uh, BIPOC horror creators, women in horror. Um, how did you all decide to, to create this programming? And what did that process look like to create um, to create these uh, various panels and presentations? Yeah, you know, a lot of that is on David Markland's end of things. And, uh, you know, like I said, just as a team, we are we are hyper aware of of the community and, and various aspects of the community. And so we do our best to cater is the wrong word because then that sounds insincere. We, 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 uh, we, and in kind of, everybody is so sick of hearing things like pivot and inclusivity, but that's what it is, right? We, we, we do our best to create, to create an inclusive environment with midsummer screen, because I've always said, I've said it with you guys for us. It's, it's, in my opinion, it's the, the island of misfit toys, right? So it, it's all the people that maybe necessarily weren't the coolest people in school or the kind of the outcasts or whatever, or maybe they're of a certain orientation or they have a different disability or, or whatever, and that's been challenging in their lives. We have always been very cognizant of creating a safe haven for people to come and spend a weekend together where there is no judgment, where there is only love and positivity and connectivity with one another, right? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you're a Halloween and horror convention or a monkey breeding convention. You know, if you have that kind of inclusive environment, that's really what it's all about. The theme is inconsequential. It's about making that connection, that real connection with other beings, with other human beings. I, I, yeah, I mean, you guys, I mean, like, like we've been saying all podcasts, you guys include everyone. There is something for everyone. Everyone, like you said, everyone's involved and, and there's no judgment. This is just, you just, like you said, it's positivity and everything. And I love going every single weekend that, you know, that it comes around um, as far as every year. It, it's just one of those things where I feel that. I feel like, uh, like, like I said, people I haven't seen in months, I get to recon reconnect with them and talk with them and geek out with them about announcements that we just heard out of that panel or something. Or, you know, look what I bought in the merch store. They're, oh, yeah, they're selling them downstairs to go to this booth. Or, hey, did you check out that maze in the Hall of Shadows? Did you go see the Decade show? You know, like it's conversations like that. And, yeah, we, we meet people, and it's there's so many nice people there, so many uh, uh, great people there. And, man, we, we I think we're just so – just so lucky to have an event like this that could bring all these groups together. That's great. And it's, um, you know, it's a huge responsibility and we, we, um, we carry that very carefully and we carry that with the utmost respect for the community. It's not, it's not feigned. It's not something that oh, we got to do it. So we just got to do it. No, we, we do that because that's how we feel. That's what we believe in. And that has all become part of our mission statement. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm always on board. All right, as we're as we're drawing closer to the end of this thing, I, I want to look back at, at last year um, since we didn't get really a, a chance to, sure. to chat about our, our previous sure. year. Um, what was your favorite presentation last year, and why was it the original Monster Kids? <laughs> yes, that <laughs> um, threw me for a loop, and that was very very good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, 
everything is such a blur. I'm I'm like going through the index. I'm rifling through the index of like what we even did last year. But um, you know, Monster Kids obviously was Monster Kids was a culmination of a lot of uh, several years of of wanting to do it, and then two years of being on hold because of the pandemic, and then going after these people. And not only getting these people, but becoming friends with these people, um, that that has just been a blessing in my life. And, uh, you know, just seeing them up there on the stage. And it's not about sitting there going, oh, man, I made this panel happen. It's about seeing this panel that is happening because it needs to happen because it's important historically that it happens. It's not about me. It's not about Markland. It's not about anybody on the team. It's about the fact that Midsummer got these people on stage together to talk about their collective and individual experiences as the original monster kids. To me, I just sat there going, God, this is so just freaking awesome, man. This is really, really, okay, really good. Okay. Now take the legacy of yeah. those people and then put yeah. the guitarist of Metallica in there Kirk Hammett. How did that come to fruition to get that? I know okay, he's a big yeah. monster fan, but God, that was yeah. a that was a really cool surprise on on top of like all this stacked guests, and then you got a great moderator. It's like, yeah, yeah. So this is this is an interesting story, and I'm very transparent about it. Uh, for the longest time, uh, my vision of the Monster Kids panel was that it was going to include Karloff, Lugosi. And Cheney, and somewhere along the line, it was probably Sarah because I, I met Sarah kind of first, and she was the champion, and she got everybody on board. Sarah's like she's a, a freaking she's rock star. She was she, it she was, was the it, highlight of that panel for me. It wasn't Kirk Hammett. She's the real rock star. Yeah, uh, <laughs> on that she's amazing, and I love her to pieces. And um, you know. Uh, Sarah said, well, you should also have, uh, I'm sure it was Sarah. She said, "You should, or so, I think it's Sarah. One of them said we should also have Victoria Price, Vincent Price's daughter. And so it was going to be the four families. And then for a long time, uh, my plan was to have Gilbert Gottfried be the host of the presentation. Oh, because man. not only not only was Gilbert like one of the greatest comedians of our time, he was also a true monster kid that lived and breathed yeah. this stuff. And then to find out, like, he had each of these families, each of these people on his podcast individually and going back and listening, going, oh, my God, this is going to be unbelievable. So I reached out to, to Gilbert and his wife, Dara, wrote a, a lovely email back and said that they're so excited and 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 so thrilled that we would think of Gilbert for this but that they had to decline because they were going to be traveling at the time and oh man talk about beating a horse i was like well you know wherever you happen to be we can fly him in for the panel and we'll fly him right back to you <laughs> and i promise we'll make sure that he gets fed and and has changed clothes and and we'll get him right back to you we promise <laughs> and they were so sweet about it and then literally two weeks later, Gilbert passed away. Yeah. And so the idea in hindsight is probably they knew that he wasn't doing well health wise. Right. And so just the fact that that Gilbert was touched and excited about that, that was very important to me. So then uh, I remember sitting in Sarah's living room. And it's Sarah Karloff, as you do, sit with Sarah in her living room. I mean, room. I, you know, I have dinner with her about like, you know, twice a week, you know. It's, it's... As you do. <laughs> and and we were spitballing, you know, like who would moderate this thing. And I don't know. I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe John Landis would be good. And, and then we talked a little bit about John Landis and then figured, well, no one is going to get a word in edgewise then if John's talking you know, about things, right? So and then, so we joked about that a little bit. Then I thought, well, maybe somebody like Leonard Malton would be cool. But then I thought, and there's nobody that's younger than I am that's going to necessarily know who Leonard Malton is. So that was kind of an eh. And so you just kind of hem and haw about these things. All the while, 
David Markland for a couple months is at my back, whispering in my ear, going, you know, I know you really want Gilbert, but if that falls through, I really, really think you should try to reach out to Kirk Hammett. And, I, yeah, 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 yeah. and so finally this all happened. And I said to David, I, I said to him, I said, okay, who, who was it that you're, who, who were you saying that I should reach out to that we should try to get? He's like Kirk Hammett. And I'm like, who is that? And like, so understand perspective. Growing up when I was really into music, right? You know, in in the eighties, I'm the Depeche Mode, New Order, Pet Shop Boys, Oingo Boingo kid. Okay, and the people that are listening to Metallica, they're the stoners that are the drummers in our marching band. They're the ones listening to Metallica. So you were in right? the new wave era, kind of. So yes, yeah. so that not me, not me. That was yeah. the long haired kids with the earrings yeah. that were smoking behind the the, the band room. So. I was like, oh, okay, uh, I, I get who that is. Um, why? Why Why would, number one, why do we want him? And why would, why would you think he'd even want to come to Midsummer Scream? And David was like, dude, he's like this huge collector. He's like what, got one of the biggest collections in the world of this stuff. And I was like, oh, you know, yeah. it was it was like one of those light bulb moments where I was like, eh. So I started looking at, and then i i had a I had a Zoom call with Kirk, and as you do, and uh, can't say I have. it was really funny <laughs> because it was really funny because he he's really sweet. He was so appreciative and he was so grateful for the opportunity, and he's good friends with all of the monster family. So yeah. that was very easy. Um and and. It was really funny because about 30 minutes into my conversation with Kirk, I'm sitting here going, there are millions of people that would be killing to be on the other end of this Zoom call, just shooting the shit, talking about, you know, growing up watching monster movies and shit like that, right? 100%. And so even though I've never been a huge Metallica fan, uh, the gravity of the situation and and, and the the out-of-control like wow factor for fans that was not lost on me as, as I was talking. And it was kind of a weird stepping back out of my body, looking, going, this is so freaking weird, you know, situation. <laughs> so, um, so monster kids happened. Um, I remained friends then with the monster families. And uh, you know, like I said earlier, Ron has so much stuff going on. He's got a massive book on the on the on the hundred years of Cheney's, you know, about about Cheney Sr. and then his grandfather, Lon Cheney, who was the Wolfman, you know, which was my monster of choice growing up. Uh, and he's got he's got a stage play that's now starting to be shopped around about about Cheney Sr. And he's got uh, graphic novels coming out and he's got this short movie that he's touring around to different film festivals now that, you know, he's got all this stuff going on. That's, we were like, well, we should do a, like another monster kids session. Right. And so that's kind of how that all happened. So that's how these, that's how the sausage gets made on this end. Um, monster kids, the legacy everything. continues. So, yeah. So, I mean, obviously monster kids was a huge, I, I, yeah. I mean, Every year I have a panel that I consider to be like my creme de la creme, right? Like that's, that's the big one, right? In years past, it was, I, I put together a, um, you know, creating scary attractions panel, right? And, right. It, and it had everybody from Susan Bonds to Phil Hedema on it and, and talking about things like Alien Encounter and, and all this stuff. And then we had, which I loved, we had, uh, you know, one year we did the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror yeah. uh, presentation about the history of, of, of making Tower with some of the, the key Imagineers that, that, that worked on Tower. And then we had Mark Silverman come, who does the voice of Rod Serling. And so that was a great panel. And, you know, Monster Kids, that's another great panel. 2019, the Haunted Mansion 50th anniversary panel which was out of control. And we introduced the world to, to Tanya McKnight, you know, the lady that was the interior designer 
of, of New Orleans Square. And now she's all over Instagram kissing Bob Gurr in, <laughs> in the buggy this week, I saw, you know. So uh, and, and God, we, you know, we have Bob back every year. Bob Gurr is a is an international treasure in the themed entertainment community. And uh, I believe he will be joining us. I haven't talked to him lately, but I believe he'll be with us again for Midsummer. Yeah. And talk about talk about only at Midsummer, like last year in the middle of the party, everybody's drinking and crazy out on the dance floor. And then all of a sudden the cheer gets louder and Bob Gurr comes into the middle dancing. and starts dancing crazy with everybody yep. in the middle of the dance floor. And I'm like... Isn't it your see, bedtime? It's the only you that's mean? you're only gonna see that at Midsummer Scream. I promise just, you that. Bob was a party animal with us, and so it was it was wonderful. We love having yeah. him. So those are the moments when I look back that I'm very proud of, and not not from a gloating point of view, but from a wow, I had a hand in making that happen so that I could share that moment with so many fans yeah. out there and just, and, and give that, you know, put that out into the world. Right. I mean, you had, a, uh, you had a very crucial part in that panel, which was getting Sarah Karloff to and from the stage. And without you, Sarah Karloff wouldn't have been on that panel. So you had a very important part too. Well, you know, it, it's also very probable that without Sarah Karloff, that panel wouldn't have happened. Exactly. Because, she instantly was like, I figured, you know, Sarah, Sarah is, um, she is, she's older and uh, well, she'll kick my ass. I got to be very careful how I say that. Sarah is, is, is veteran and uh, she is, um, uh, she's a pistol though. And so the minute I said, she said, well, who do you want to, you know, moderate this? And we were talking, I said, you know, David is mentioning Kirk Hammett, but we don't know how to go about necessarily getting hold of them or whatever. She goes, Oh, I'll, I'll call him. He'll, he'll do it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. You know, as you will, the next morning there was email in my inbox saying, Kirk is very interested and would love to do this. I think you gotta be kidding me. So Sarah literally was like the stealth weapon behind making the monster kids panel happen. Yeah. And she is a force of nature that you never want to be on the, the, the wrong side of. And first of all, Sarah had to be helped on stage because literally a few weeks prior, a week or two prior to midsummer scream, she had a really bad accident. And so she was, broken and bruised like you wouldn't believe and she not only didn't cancel coming she flew she flew from out of state to be on the panel uh elianova and i went and picked her up at the long beach airport and brought her to the hotel um she had to have a mobility scooter because she had multiple broken bones not bruised bones broken bones and she was insistent. Uh, she was insistent that she was going to do this thing. And not only did she do the panel presentation and insist on walking. So we had a lift backstage that lifted her scooter. Right. Uh, and, and, and Sarah on the scooter is craziness flying down the back hallways. It was unbelievable. <laughs> the woman's a, a wild woman on that thing. Um, so we, we, we lift the, 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 the mobility scooter up onto the stage she insisted, 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 insisted that she was going to walk out on stage, right? And she had a broken bone, like, in her foot. I forget where it was. But so she's doing all of this. And not only did she do that and do it flawlessly and wow. steal the show, she stayed at her booth on the show floor for about 80% of the entire weekend, talking to scores of fans that waited in line to talk to her and Sarah, Sarah, when she's talking to you as a fan, she makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. I have a story and, about that. Yeah. And, and so not only was she broken, bruised and battered coming to us, she did the entire show floor thing for the whole weekend. So Sarah is, she's a, she's a God is what she is. And, and talk about a rock star. She was unbelievable. So I, I will say that without Sarah as my stealth weapon on this, there is a very high probability that most of, if not all of that panel would not have come to fruition yeah. like it did. 
No, I, so I yeah. got to meet Sarah. You ha you guys had her at, at Season Screams, Season Screamings. Yeah. And um, yeah. I I got to meet her at the. I, I waited to the very end of the event so I can have a little kind of like I wanted to talk with her, but I'm a huge Boris Karloff fan. Like I got him tattooed on me. Like that. There we go. You know, like he's my monster, and I've always loved like the the more the the tragedy of the monster rather than the kind of yeah, you know yeah. the tragedy is always the story's been sad that he just wanted to be have friends and no one accepted him. You know, I know any, anyone who's anyone can know how that feels not being accepted into society. Um, and people often people often misinterpret the story like Dr. Frankenstein and others are the monsters. Yep. It's not the Boris Karloff character. Nope. That's even though his name is the monster. He's not the monster in that story. No. Yeah. The ones who brought him to life were the monsters. And he was just trying to fit in with society and society didn't want to accept yep. him. He just yeah. wanted love and acceptance. Yep. Yeah, and I, and I absolutely love that story. And then you know, growing up, you know, it was right, that was around Christmas time. So growing up watching The Grinch every single year, Grinch. you know, I mean that that's iconic too. You can never forget that voice and that and that little short uh, film when that came out. You know, so getting to talk to her, I was really, you know, she was talking. She obviously she and this is how you know she's the goat. She literally guilted me into buying her dad's Blu-ray, and I was like, "I will buy it, but you got to sign it." And she's like, "Deal." And I and we had a great conversation. She was super lovely. You're right. She makes you feel like you're the only person with when she's talking to you. Like it is unreal. It was awesome. Yeah, I don't. It. it, it I, I watched her uh, up close and afar with our guests throughout the weekend because I was very protective of her. Like Elianova and I were like. Every 15 minutes, it seemed like we were, like, peeking and making sure she was okay. And she had a line of people always. And she had uh, people, even at season screamings, it was that way, too. And I was standing within earshot at one point, And there was a, a, a fan talking to her. And she said, I, I'm sorry, I'm taking up too much time. There are people waiting. And Sarah goes, no, it's okay. I'm talking to you. And that was the way that it was, like, the entire time. That's awesome. So, yes, having her also then, we got to double dip and then another Monster Kid spinoff was having Sarah then there on the panel at Season Screamings um, on a presentation that I actually was the moderator of uh, about the making of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Right. Because her father narrates. The, Iconic the, voice. The yeah. yeah, and so so that was a spinoff. That was the first spinoff from from the from the Monster Kids panel, and I guess this this Ron Chaney one coming up. That's going to be the second spinoff uh, from that. So uh, yeah, it, it's it, it's crazy how that all happens, and these are moments, and it's very important to us that people understand that we are extremely camera friendly at Midsummer. So unless a studio is doing something that says, you know, we don't want any cameras or whatever, we love that people can take pictures and take video as long as it's not intrusive, right, or, or blows it for somebody. We love that the media, and we have a lot of media out, um, does document all this stuff because in, in many cases, I'll, I'll tell you the heartbreak in a minute, in many cases – sitting down for the weeks and months that follow midsummer that's the only way that we get to experience midsummer because wow. being there as media or as a guest is very different than being on the back and being one of four people at the helm of this thing running it um the weekend goes in a blur a blur and i barely remember any of it and so if you've ever caught me in the hall and said hey rick or whatever and i look like a deer in the headlights it's because uh i am and I'm probably like physically and mentally uh, exhausted and drained and I forget people's names and I just it everything is moving so fast that it's just it's crazy pants time. So we love that people do record the panels and presentations because that's really the only way once in a while Monster Kids was an exception. I sat in the front row with Elianova and I said. I'm watching the whole damn thing because I really want to see this. Yeah. You know, I remember Worked that. My ass off to bring it, and so I did. That's a very rare thing that I get to do. David Markland and Claire—they're so busy with the operations while this thing is going, they don't get that luxury. They don't get to do that. Gary, Gary Baker, he runs all of our AV, so he gets to whether he wants to or not sit and watch <laughs> everything 
that goes on in the big room. So that's that's Gary's point of view for the weekend. Uh, but he's also very focused on making sure that the console, like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. He doesn't just get to sit there and, and days, you know, days off. But um, I'll tell you the thing that killed me. And hopefully one of these days, if it exists, somebody will upload it to YouTube. Nobody last year apparently recorded the Grinch panel. And I went looking for it on YouTube, and it wasn't there. And I'm thinking, oh, come on. There's usually like three or four or five versions of every panel up there. There wasn't one from the Grinch, and it just it, it breaks my heart. So if anybody is out there watching this or if anybody knows somebody that recorded it, for God's sake, please put it on YouTube. Because, like I say, these are shooting star moments, and when they're gone... They're gone. We don't get that back. And Midsummer, no, we don't. You think that we might, and sometimes I question why we don't, but we have so many things going on, and it's already such an expensive beast to produce and create. No, we don't record our own panel presentations. We don't have a video camera in the back of the room. We don't hire somebody to shoot it. We, we just don't. We don't have time, and we don't have the budget for that. And so if anybody has the Grinch panel from Season Streaming's please, please, like, let us know or upload it or something, because I would love to see that. Um, seeing it from on stage is very different than from seeing it uh, as an audience member. And uh, that was a really special, that was probably one of my most just personally special moments in all the years that I've been, been producing these shows with the team. Um, that That Grinch panel the one that we're talking about a lot that you can't see online um, the, was was literally one of my most favorite moments ever at a convention. In fact, I think that was my probably my favorite panel that I've ever hosted at a convention. It was so beautiful and just so positive and, and full of love and, and just adoration for this this film that that so many of us have grown up with for all the you know cross generations. Um, so God, if anybody has that. We'd, we'd love to see that. That would be perfect. So, yeah. I'll make sure to give you guys a nice shout-out then uh, when I'm filming the Midsummer videos next week, and I'll be like, hey, Rick, how you doing? There we go. <laughs> that way yeah, you get a little sense absolutely. of some reactions. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That would be a lot of Well, fun. now we're at our halfway point. Yeah. What's going on, Sammy? Let, let's talk about more. What, what are we talking about now? Uh, let's see. I, you've, you've already – you answer every question I come up with. So this is the fun game of what question do I ask next? I have to ask because it is the 50th anniversary of Not Scary. Here comes another I have to ask. <laughs> like, the minute this you one, say okay. I have to ask, my ass is still hot from the last question. <laughs> All right. But this isn't more – this is just me being a fanboy. This is not Midsummer sure. Scream related. This is TPA sure. related. Oh, boy. All right. Is, 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 uh, People are going, uh, so, what? Hey, I'm just saying, 50th anniversary, yeah. you know? Are we going to see something? No. It's just, no a little, just a little is. something? No, no. TPA has been put to bed for sure. That's I that, thought for that, sure that, you would come out of retirement to cover the fifth. No, no. You know, I, I'll be again. I'm very transparent with people. Um, there was a point I would say for about two months, I was very, very serious about bringing TPA back in podcast form, and uh, was very serious about it had my first few guests lined up and, and ready in the format and everything. And, um, you know, I just had a come to Jesus moment where I just kind of stepped back and said, no, TPA had its time. It had its season. God knows there are so many theme park related, you know, podcasts and things out there that are so much better than I could be. And, um, you know, at this point, do I, do I really, really want to put something else on my plate like that? Um, you know, I'm 53 now. I haven't been in the greatest health the past couple of years. Um, hopefully we're on the on the other side of that now, too. But uh, not the 53 thing. I'm sadly getting older every freaking day. <laughs> but uh, health-wise, you know, we're, we're getting there very slowly. And... Um, no, there there are other things that I that I have on the horizon. You know, we we're wanting to move out of California as soon as we can, um, not far to Las Vegas. That means um, when I go on vacation, I, I can just call you up and we can go hang out in the strip. 
everybody will right <laughs> so moving to vegas is like oh my god you'll never see your friends again and it's like no you'll see too many friends because everybody comes goes to, vegas. to vegas yeah everybody goes to vegas so um and i've got big plans i got big plans for projects that i want to do when i'm boots on ground in vegas and i just want to enjoy the newness and the exciting uh new new adventures uh that are to come uh once we move and and once the ball gets rolling on different projects um tpa was a very special uh project that went on a lot longer than it had any business going on and uh it was it was uh it was wonderful it paved the road it paved the way for for me to be involved in things like like season like 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 Scarlet a, which became midsummer scream and and then season screamings and other things and uh everything in life serves its purpose right and like i said there are seasons for things and um I, I I look back on that and I remember things fondly. I have friends that I've had for decades now that I met through TPA and because of TPA. Um, I blazed a lot of trails that a lot of folks don't even probably realize <laughs> that I blazed or cared, really. I mean, um, but I did and I know that I did. And so that was a really cool story and that was a really cool season and that season ended and so i toyed with kind of doing the 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 podcast thing for a couple months um i find that it is much easier and much more appealing to me to be guest on people's podcasts than to have to do all the dirty work myself (laughs) so i'm also the creative guy is also sometimes the laziest guy in the room. And I just thought, God, do I really, 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 really at this point want to be producing a podcast yeah. too? So um, the answer is no. TPA is definitely done. Um, but I do, I still do get a little bit of jealous feeling like when I hear, oh man, they're going to have this big media event for this, this, this. I'm like, hmm, you know, type <laughs> of thing. But, you know, everything has changed and the pandemic kind of put things into perspective for me. Like there was a time when I was at a theme park once or twice a week. Right. And I, I haven't been, I haven't been to Disneyland in over two and a half years. Wow. I, I haven't been to knots. I don't think that we've been to knots since haunt. Maybe we went during Christmas time for a little while or something, but um, I do want to go see the new um, the new uh, uh, Fiesta Village that they've done. I think that looks really nice. Um, I'd like to wait probably till maybe maybe when Zoom opens, but maybe not because who knows when Zoom's going to open. <laughs> um, I do want to write. Zoom was the first. Boy, we're on a tangent. Zoom was the first <laughs> looping toaster. You started it with the whole TPA thing. Hey, I'm a fan. Uh, so <laughs> I love it. Zoom Montezuma's Revenge when it opened was the first looping roller coaster I ever went on. Really? And yeah, I was like eight or nine or whatever it was. You know, I was born in 70. So whenever it opened, that's how old I was. <laughs> and I was so excited and I, I loved it. It scared the shit out of me, but I loved it and I, and I did it. So I'm, I'm curious to see what the new Zoom is going to be like. Um, but design wise, I mean, the whole area looks really great. So we're excited to go check it out. Not when it's 120 outside, but, uh, yeah. you know, we'll wait for it to be a little bit cooler. Hopefully it's cooler by the time Haunt comes around. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm rambling, but everything has a season and seasons do come to an end. And, uh, I, I'm not trying to bring this down. We'll, we'll, we'll land on something that gets it back up here, but I mean, you know, everything begins and everything ends. There is nothing that is forever. Right. So, so there are bigger and, and newer adventures coming. Listen, you gave me the moment to see TPA in action when it wasn't even in action when we went through the Christmas uh, haunt of uh, Corona haunt. You went through and you're like TPA yeah. style. So I was like, I'm going right behind him because I want to see him work. Yeah. So we I got to go through video. Yeah, yeah. I got the kind of like private tour right there. And I was like, that that's good enough for me right there. That was that, that was, was it. fun. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are times that just for a fleeting second, I miss things. And God, I look at POV videos now and go, 
like the iPhone that I had. Low light. To do a better this, video. Yeah. Dude, you do better video than, than the, the thousand plus twelve hundred dollar, you know, camcorders you or like whatever. 4K, that I used to buy. 8K in your hand now, man. Dude. And it's like, where in the hell was this technology? But uh, you know, it it's it's fun and you know, it, it is what it is and it was what it was. And um I'm I'm proud of the work that I did with that, but I'm I I when I think about it, it's fleeting. And when I think about it, there are no regrets. And when I think about it, uh, there's no desire to, to, to revisit that really. And ultimately I think that's why, you know, the podcast idea petered out because I was kind of like been there, done that. And I'm already having a good time being on people's podcasts, you know, so why mess up a good thing? So, but I do have, I do have uh, a small stack of projects that are Vegas specific that I want to do. And there are people that I've talked to in Vegas. Um, I'm being vague here. There are people that I've talked to in Vegas that are really excited about said projects. So um, it's a matter of getting there and starting to execute. And uh, yeah, a lot of them do include the haunt community. I'm just letting you know, you take it to Vegas, we're showing up with you. <laughs> Can't wait. We'll be on the next flight out. Well, me and my girlfriend Vegas, will drive, you know, he'll fly. Vegas. Vegas is ripe. Vegas, and this does tie into TPA. So there was a time in Southern California that there were a lot of haunters, but there wasn't necessarily a community, right? And so I, I do feel that TPA played a, a pretty big part in bringing like a hub, bringing that community together. And uh, Vegas, Vegas reminds me of how the SoCal haunt community was in, you know, the late 90s. They have a community there. They just don't realize that they have a community there. I, and they I, I was blown away when I went. Tissue. Yeah. Yeah. So they need some connective tissue and some camaraderie. And uh, I see a lot of similarities and I see a lot of opportunity to get in there and kind of bring that community together, uh, TPA style, you know, yeah. uh, 2.0, you know, with that community. And then the ultimate goal through various projects or whatever whatever endeavors we embark on, uh, the ultimate goal is to bridge that gap between Las Vegas and Southern California and make it a mega community. Nice. I'm talking haunt from yeah. coast to coast right there, man. That's man, it, it's, it's, it's just, um, you know, Vegas has always been to me, Vegas is just like going to another city in Southern California. It feels like you're in Southern California still when you're in, in Southern Nevada. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just, um, it, it's ripe. It's ripe. They have haunted attractions. They've got home haunts. They just, they just don't like talk to each other. They don't, it, it, it's, it's just, they, they don't know what they don't know. And so uh, there are plans and, and there are plans big and small that will help grow that community into something that is um, its own force to be reckoned with. And then I really do believe that you join that and SoCal together. And that's like, that's like nuclear fusion right there for Halloween. hundred percent. Now there's, yeah, it's a big community. When I was out there, I was noticing things like area 15, which is getting the yeah. permanent HHN expansion in the back of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. We did the in escape room out there. That was freaking phenomenal, man. That was well detailed. I want to go do the saw escape room, the the Blair Witch, it chapter two coming out later this summer. We're going back to do it, you know. And and yeah. the community is is building up. I you know if if they were to bring back the haunt they used to do in Circus Circus at the Adventure Dome, you know that could be a lot of fun, you know, to see that return or something. I don't know if they ever would, but you know, I, I had heard stories about how cool it was back in the day. Uh, at least my girlfriend, when she used to go to it, she thought it was really. I did it cool. once. I, I did it once, and it was it was more impressive than I thought it was going to be. Let's put it that way. Right. I was I was pleasantly surprised. That's the same guy that does the it escape room and saw oh, yeah? and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I met him. Yep. He he was a nice guy then. He, I met him at the uh, it escape room. He was pretty cool yeah. actually. Um. And That's Jason Jason Egan, I think. Yeah. Egan Entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, they were cool, man, and and so I mean I see it. There's expansion there, yeah. and it's and it's growing. And Vegas, like you said, I don't think they know it yet. You're there in early stages of like building that community. I have a feeling when that Halloween Horror Nights gets it, that's where it's. And then if you bring stuff over from you know to Vegas too, all that's gonna really bridge it all together and be like, oh, okay, we have something here. Let's build this community together now. Yeah, all in good time. All I, in good time. I think that the the plans are doable. 
uh, the plans are exciting. And um, yeah, I, I think that it will work. It's just a matter of making the jump across the Mojave. And I'm as soon as midsummer is over with, I'm I'm just I'm I'm focusing all my firepower on making that happen for us. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're actually taking a vac- me and my girlfriend taking a vacation the next weekend to to Vegas. We're like, yeah, we need a one last one before season starts. I envy you, and I think Elianova and I are gonna try as hard as we can to hit Vegas as soon as midsummer is over, just for a couple nights, just to kind of decompress and everything. So yeah, MGM yeah. MGM play uh the MGM apps, man. The comp rooms, those are amazing. <laughs> I love them. Or just. Just gamble a lot. You'll get or that too. too. Yeah, you get comps. There's there that. <laughs> Not that I know by, but no. Yeah, I I do love I playing. Love, so I love yes, Vegas. Yes, there are comps. It's yeah, fun. yeah. That's a whole other podcast. Yes, discussion. it is. But uh, <laughs> Mr. Rick West, uh, Midsummer Scream. It's coming uh, a week from Friday, man. As of this recording. Um, it's coming. It's going to be a big one. Year six. Uh, there's a lot we we broke down today. A uh, busy, packed weekend. Um, if you can describe Midsummer Scream 2023 in just three words so far, what would those three words be? Holy shit. <laughs> there you go. Right? <laughs> three words. Um, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's gonna, you know, it's the mothership. It's gonna, it's gonna blow your minds. And I think that we have a really, really good show this year. You know, we say that every year, but we, we mean it. And, uh, Boy, everything from the screening room, the screaming room to the the grand ballroom to Hall of Shadows to the 350 plus vendors on the show floor to to the 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 drag presentations to everything. There is something for everyone, and we have just made sure that uh, we've just gone over the top with everything this year. So I think that everybody's going to be excited and, and surprised and. Uh, Getting ready to blow. We're getting ready to drag those big uh, blow up cats out of the boxes and, and and have them greeting all the guests as they as they come in this year. And uh, some things never change. And that's that's one of our those visuals that people love and and other things continue to grow and expand. So we're very excited about the show that we've created for everybody this year. Man, July 28th to the 30th at the Long Beach Convention Center in Long Beach, California. Tickets are still on sale now unless they've sold out. Yeah. But uh, no, As of now, we, we still have passes on sale. Um, I got to reiterate because uh, it's it's very important. And now the technology plays a critical role in everything. Uh, make sure you download the Midsummer app, right? Yes. It's in the Apple Store. It's in the in the the Android Store, whatever that's called. I don't know because I. But uh, <laughs> Google Play. You know, whatever the store is, you know, download it. It's a free app. It lists all the panels, all the presentations, what time. Yep. You can favorite things. You can you can make comments. It's like a chat board. On I mean, you can plan your entire event. We're gonna have all the maps on there for you um i can give you here's an exclusive you want an exclusive let's get an exclusive so the hall of shadows you know our theme is dungeons and demons this year yep so uh we have created you know we every year we have the little bird's eye map that you look at that shows the hall of shadows and all that right um this year it looks like a dungeons and dragons module on it, so it's got the grid paper and the numbers and all this stuff, and so there you go. It's we 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 made the map look like like a like a campaign map That's that fun. you would find on the grid paper, and so there's there's yep. an exclusive. You'll see the nice you'll see the map item right there. And, there you go. You'll see the map soon, and it's a total nod to D and D stuff. Love it, man. I love it. I love it so much. Go ahead and follow Midsummer Scream on instagram uh that's where you're gonna get all the details of upcoming panels of, of the scheduling of everything there is to know about going into that weekend and also download that midsummer stream app i guarantee you and i'm speaking from experience it's a big lifesaver it helps you plan your day yeah. of what you want to see uh you get to go and, and find out where all vendors are hall of shadows uh all, like you like rick said all the schedule it's all there for your entire weekend to be planned and uh, ready to go Take advantage of that app. Uh, we cannot wait. And don't forget, Thursday from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., you can pick up your uh, badges early. Uh, that way, uh, what was it, for Gold Bat and, and Press? Is it all tickets or just, just the Gold Bats and Press? I I believe everything's ready to rock and roll. Everything's ready when to rock and roll. When we out there, the credentials are out there. All the, the, all the you know, your, your ticketing um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's all going to be available on Thursday. Awesome. So, yeah. And again, watch our socials because I'm sure that they'll, they'll put that out more on social. Yeah, definitely follow the socials. Uh, that way you guys can keep the, uh, the up to know of what's going on. We always post this stuff too. Um, and also uh, tomorrow, as I, not tomorrow as in our time, but as in your guys' time, we are going to be doing our Midsummer Scream ticket giveaway. So if you guys – have found out what was going on. Uh, yeah, we're, we're giving away some passes to Midsummer Scream, like we've been doing the last couple of years, and we've been fortunate enough to uh, to work with the Midsummer Scream team on that. And they they always they always surprise us every single year, and we're very grateful for that. Um, we do it because we know what it's like to you know not have the money to afford things and stuff like that, and we want people to experience this event. We want people to have a good time, and so if we can at least bring two people, uh, up to four people, to this event and make their weekend a little bit better, uh, that's just the goal. We like doing it out of the kindness of our hearts, and we want everyone to experience this amazing event and have a great time. So that's going to end tomorrow. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, gonna end it here because, uh, man, I'm too excited. I can't even finish talking, man. It's Midsummer Screams next weekend. Sammy, you know what? You can go ahead and finish it, unless he's frozen again. I think he's frozen yeah. again. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you? No. We can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, I'm frozen. I don't know why my camera stopped working. I think it's too hot. Sammy, it's like you're a ventriloquist. He is. Yeah, I, I, like your mouth isn't moving, but we hear you. Yeah, I think my I think my camera's too hot. It's too hot in my house. <laughs> it's, a ni- it's a nice 111 or 102 right now. So we're so we're we're good. Uh, but yes, uh, <laughs> wait. What am I supposed to mention? I got sidetracked by my heat. <laughs> uh, socials. Send Sammy ice. Send Sammy ice. Everybody. Yeah. All the way to Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. What part of Arizona are you in, Sam? Did we lose some audio too? Oh my god. I asked the fatal question. Uh oh. He's like, I live in Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. I'm back again. I, I, I think I'm my computer's absolutely dying in this heat. It's frying. I just asked what part of Arizona you're in. I'm just outside of Phoenix. Oh yeah. It's hotter than hell. So <laughs> keep yourself cool, dude. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I am. The air conditioning's on, but I think my camera's not used to recording for an hour and 40 minutes, so... Hey, we burned it up, man. We, we burned we it up. We get requests on the podcast. You know it's going to be a minimum of an hour and a half. We <laughs> burned it up. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I was just going to say do the socials and stuff as usual. You're yeah. good at that. No, for sure. Uh, you can uh, catch us on uh, Instagram and Twitter and kick at the Knights of Horror and Twitter at Knights of Horror. Um, and that's where we'll be posting all of our updates. Oh, I'm dying. I think <laughs> I, I get. I'm, I'm, he's tapped out. You got this, Tony. Like, he's tapped and... out. Damn. He's tapped out. Okay, Instagram, Thread, TikTok at the Knights of Horror, uh, Twitter at Knights of Horror, and on Kick. If you want to watch a stream every Tuesdays and Thursdays at Knights of Horror Gaming, check us out there. Uh, we're with our really good friend uh, Rick West. Thank you again for uh, being part of this creative team to put this amazing show together, and we are super stoked to uh, to see it all come to life. Thank you guys so much, and uh, ready or not, here it comes. Bam! We'll see you in Long Beach. See you guys in Long Beach, man. It's going to be a great weekend. 